Greetings everyone and welcome to another latest mix set build videos from Monster Hunter World. Today's build will be diving into a particular simple non sword build using the Beza Vaga Rook Slayer and offering a quick and flashy damage setup with simple armor that can be crafted within a few minutes and a fun favorite of mine that I like to use when I want to chill and run through monsters quickly. Today's build is called the High Octane Mix Set. So the Beza Vaga Rook Slayer is a rarity 8 long sword and comes with an attack value of 660, 2 level 1 dual slots, minus 10 affinity, a average amount of green and blue sharpness that can reach white sharpness with handicraft 3, and 210 blast damage. This weapon has a unique looking design that looks like something you would see from Diablo or Dark Souls series with this demonic look, which should straight away tell you that it's a weapon worth investing for. And with that being said, it plays out very strong for a rarity 8 longsword when fully upgraded, and can lead you into many nice and clear runs if you know how to build around it. Sadly, for its great looking stats and great looks, it comes with minus 10 affinity, which can be bothersome for some newer high rank players that want to take this weapon out for spin and don't have the right skills to mend it yet. And as the weapon is also a rare D8, this means it only comes with one augmentation slot, which you have to really think ahead on what you want to build around it and what augmentation would be best for you to go with. For veteran players, this shouldn't be a problem to deal with as you'll most likely have all the following skills needed to adjust the miner's affinity and affinity wise you'll probably have a good understanding of what is best to choose. Now I'd like to compare this weapon to another two more longswords of similar stats that would also be a great choice to pick for alternatives and they are the Dunnustra the Longsword and Teosha Longswords. These two weapons are similar in stats, attack damage and statuses but all have pros and cons that singles them out from being the best. For example, the Dunnustra Longswords generally all have varying stats that offer more in terms of crafting and build around them and their attack value is all vary to compensate with their innate skill that are attached to the weapons, such as being able to heal after X amount of hits, or being able to not lose sharpness every now and then. It's because of these very unique, unique skills, it makes them highly sought after weapons because of their freedom and stats, and it also brings along with them varying slot levels which makes crafting around them even more crazy for players. However, the downside to them is that 1. They don't stack with their counterparts, so you can't stack the Xeno's Razor Sharp skill with the Luna Longsword sharp skill, as they both have the same skill, if that makes sense. And secondly, they come with one augmentation slot, just like the Basil Rook Slayer, and you can't pick and choose which level slots you want to have, so you get what you're given. Next we have the Teosha Longsword, or the Imperial Shimmer, which comes in at 627 attack value, which is slightly lower than the rest compared to the other Longswords, but has 300 blast status to boot, which beats out the Basil Rook Slayer and Lunasha's Longsword by a small margin, or wide margin. Much like the other Nush Longsword and Base Longsword, it also comes with white sharpness straight out of the packet and one augmentation slot, but it's probably the closest in terms of sharing near identical stats to the Basil Rock Slayer, without the minus infinity involved. As you can see, these are alternative weapons you can use instead if you don't want to use the Basil Rock Slayer Longsword, as they all offer unique stats and flexibility for build crafting. It's just that you have to think first as to what you want to get out of the weapon and how you can make it as great as possible compared to the alternatives which I can provide for today's build. So the high octane build is just as the name states, something easy to put together and yet will allow you to rush through monsters incredibly quickly with just a few required skills needed and is wonderful for all content as the damage may seem low but it plays out pretty fine when you put pressure onto the monster. And trust me, when you're playing longsword you want to put as much pressure onto the monster, you don't want the monster to back off and run away, you just want to keep hitting them, keep pushing the damage out and lock down everything around you. So basically crowd control in a way. So here are the following skills used for the set, and like always, if there's something that you don't agree with, you can always change it and adapt it to your own build. So I have Blast Attack 3 to increase my Blast build up on my weapon even more, although if you can, you can replace this with something else, like Item Prolonger, to extend the sharp skill you have, so you can keep your DPS up a lot more higher. But this is kind of up to you, Blast Attack is nice, as it basically means that I'll be able to proc it more often, and that basically means that if I proc it more often, that's basically 320 damage for me. But if you don't want to and you feel like you've got enough blast, then by all means switch out for something else. Next, we have Critical Eye 3, which I added on to negate the minus 10 affinity, although you could add on the Nerge Waste instead and get the Attack Up bonus skill, as you'll have maximum might at max, and that will generally be aiding you throughout the whole entirety of the fight. Next, I have Weakness Exploit 3 for the plus 50 on the two monsters' weak points. Then I went with Handicraft 3 to increase the weapon's sharpness so I can hit white, and then combine that with Protective Polish skill so I can then retain sharpness for around 30 seconds. 
But I did this so I can increase my DPS more when doing moves such as Foresight Slash or Spirit Blade Slashes, which both do high amount of damage when paired together, but they burn through sharpness way too quickly. And even if you do miss, it's not much of a biggie, but the sharpness that you lose is way too much. So adding on a sharp jewel for this actually comes in handy. Next, I use Maximum Might 3 to add on plus 30 affinity to my weapon, so I can pull off extra damage upon critical hits. Then I have Defense Boost 2, which is part of the chess piece I'm using, and is okay to have, but not really needed, as, as long as you upgrade your armor pieces or augment them, you'll generally be fine. Plus, you can always swap it out for its beta version if you want more jewel slots available, which is handy if you have a much more wider idea of where you want to take this build even further to. But I also went with this because of fashion reasons as well. The cape looks amazing for the build and makes me look like a royal knight of some, I, I don't really know how to say it, but it's just some imperial uh, medieval game, but a bit more high on the resolution. But you don't have to go with this, like I said before. If you have a much more better idea, then go with the beta version, which will give you more dual slots. And then you could probably add in something like say health boost or steed fast or even more attack if you want to but this is one of those things where i only added this in because of just fashion and you'll probably see me do more of these more often anyways we have focus 2 which allows me to fill up my spirit gauge meter much quicker which may be 50 50 to you as you can already fill your meter up quickly by attacking like normal so you can if you want to swap this out for something else like the lunastra chest for more jewel slots or dover chest for attack boost up or the, even the Colby chest, so you can build around the crit boost if you want to. But personally for me, it's 50-50. It's useful, but it's not really that needed. Lastly, we have 3 element 1 and power plumber 1, which is part of the Colby gloves and mainly used for the slot level for me to fill in. I didn't use the Lunastra gloves, as I simply only needed a slot for my sharp jewel and blast jewel. I thought that using the Lunastra gloves just for them would be a poor choice at best, because when you think about it, one jewel slot for the sharp jewel is fine, but using a, I believe a level 2 or level 3 jewel slot just for blast, it doesn't feel that well spent. So I went with the Colby gloves instead, but like I said, if you have a much more better idea and you want to go with the alternative, by all means go ahead. If you want to, you could probably add in something like peak performance, since you're going to keep your health up at high all times. Overall, your attack value will be 710, your defense will be 433, with your affinity being at 80%, once recent exploit 3 activates, and quite a stylish looking hunter with everything coming together. I've also augmented my weapon with a health aug so I can get health back, and it's probably a wise choice to go with for increased DPS, as you'll be carting less, and if you're carting less, that basically means more DPS. That kind of reminds me to think about it. Now like I said before, this set focuses on quick and flashy combos that will all play out smoothly for stacking damage. And quite honestly, it does a great job at what I expected for it. I was building up your spirit meter is near instant with a few pokes and slashes, and then building it up and then using your spirit blade will allow you to pull off high damage, especially for your use of Helmbreaker. At the same time, because of how often you're going to be using your spirit blade, you're also going to be building up your blast status, which can activate when your spirit blade is in use. So you can get a flat out 120 blast damage onto a monster then and then, and then do a Helmbreaker or further spirit blade combo for more damage. So you can see where the kind of combo and being all pressure onto the monster is coming from now. And don't forget, once you hit low sharpness or confront a monster, like before you actually confront a monster, you can sharpen your weapon to retain its sharpness for a few seconds. So this can come in handy for dealing out damage there and then quickly. But this only works if you play aggressive. You've got to put pressure onto the monster. In a way, as the damage you can do is very high, and if you're someone that plays the longsword and you genuinely know everything about the longsword, then you'll be able to pull this off easily and quickly. While if you're someone that is relatively new to longsword, then this may take you a while to get used to, but if you want to speed things up and you want to be capable of slaying monsters easily with the set, then I advise you to go ahead and learn how to use your foresight slash, as this can really get you in and out of action easily and safely, and if you pull off successfully and then decide to use your spirit blade, you can then actually fill your spirit gauge up by a whole bar, which is incredibly useful and incredibly powerful when timed. And there you have it guys, my quick action longsword build that is capable of doing a huge amount of damage when changed correctly 
and enough pressure to put onto a monster. And it's relatively easy to build if you have the required jewels. And if you don't have the jewels, then it's not really much of a biggie because you can honestly just use what you currently got. The armor set will provide you with all the main stats you have. It's just that you may not be attacking that hard, but nonetheless, it still packs a punch. And if you're someone that's new to Hunter Rank or to Monster Hunter, and you want a long sword that is pretty simple to use, but you want something that can give you a kind of a boost so you can work your way up to get more better skills and more better armor throughout the end game, this set here is probably one that you can definitely grind for, even if you don't have the jewels. So if you enjoy the content, then do leave a like, a sub, and also do press the bell button to stay always updated to when I upload, as I would appreciate a lot if you do. But like always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.